Good afternoon. Mark Suttoth, HurricaneTrack.com here with your Hurricane Outlook and discussion for Monday, the 21st day of November 2016. Well, we're talking tropical storms and hurricanes again. And the reason why? Well, first and foremost, the season does last for six months out of the year, from June 1st here through November 30th. So anywhere in this window, you can get tropical cyclone activity. And even outside of that window, you remember this year, January, we had Hurricane Alex, an anomaly, something definitely unusual. But, uh, you know, it's not just during the peak months here that we have activity. Even over here at the tail end, uh, right at the end of the season, it is possible, even though climatologically speaking, it's very unusual. If we look at the brand new, updated, bright and shiny points of origin map going back 165 years from the National Hurricane Center. Now they've added these little tracks, little squiggly lines coming off the red dots down here around Panama and Costa Rica. During that 165 year time period, there have been two other incidences. Is that a word? Incidents of uh, development. And so it's not completely unprecedented, but it certainly is unusual. So what do we have? Well, the Hurricane Center has upgraded what was TD number 16 down here in the Southwest Caribbean Sea to Tropical Storm Auto. That's O-T-T-O. And it's going to mill around, and then eventually it looks like it's going to move westward towards Nicaragua and possibly Costa Rica. And this is going to be a big rainmaker. I'm going to be talking more about that in the coming days because I think that's going to be the biggest problem from this system. Although, some of the modeling indicating that it could get fairly strong. So let's jump in and see what all we have going on. First of all, you can see a very well-defined counterclockwise circulation, fairly decent outflow with the system, especially considering that we are in the last third of November, only days left in the, you know, the calendar part of the hurricane season. Uh, this isn't doing too bad, right? Uh, so let me give you a geographic reference here. We have Panama, and then we have Costa Rica, and then here is Nicaragua and Honduras and Colombia in South America. And so our system, for the most part, uh, keeping most of the effects out over water, a few showers and thunderstorms starting to move their way into the coast from the north and northwest along the uh, Panama region. So heavy rain starting to fall down there. This region is important. We have the Panama Canal, so it's an important shipping and commerce area, corridor. A lot of tourism down in Costa Rica. Uh, so, you know, this is going to be a problem and a big newsmaker. And I'm really fearful for the rainfall that this could produce over here in Nicaragua and parts of Costa Rica as this starts to move and do so very slowly. Something I'll keep an eye on. And again, I will talk about it more in subsequent video blogs here coming in the next few days. Why again are we having this? Well, you know, aside from the fact that it's technically possible, you know, and climatologically possible, we're not talking about, you know, something something in January or February where it's out of season. There are a few other things that make this make sense. Water temperatures in this region 27, 28 degrees Celsius, so low 80s, so the water temperatures are still warm enough. The upper ocean heat content in the Southwest Caribbean Sea, where this is located, fairly decent in the mid-range here for the most part. Low to mid-range, mid it's not like all the heat content has been taken out uh, due to cold air advection or the loss of solar heating or whatever. I mean, we've eroded all that away up here in the subtropics and in the Gulf of Mexico, for example, all except for the Southwest part. But down here in the Caribbean, we still have that deep, warm water providing ample fuel for this system to develop. And therefore, there's a lot of moisture, humidity, energy available in the atmosphere. And as I'll show you in a moment, the upper level winds are favorable. And voila, here we go. And add to that, and as I kind of segue into a, a different part of the discussion here, the departure from normal around here, a little bit above the long-term average by about a degree and a half Celsius or so, roughly. I think that's it, or maybe it's a degree and a half Fahrenheit. It doesn't matter one way or the other. It is warmer than it should be down here. So all of this with, uh, I guess, enough of a disturbance coming in, uh, the pre-existing disturbance, boom, now we have Tropical Storm Auto. Now, while I am on this map, 
Let me show you a couple of very interesting things. We have the La Nina in here across the equatorial Pacific, a very cold northern Pacific, uh, colder than normal southern Pacific. And if you compare the Atlantic, especially the northwest Atlantic and the main development region through here, boy, the Atlantic Basin compared to the Pacific this year, uh, at this time of year, is certainly warmer overall. And so we'll have to see how that holds over the coming months, something to keep an eye on and something I will discuss on a weekly basis when this becomes the off-season edition of the Hurricane Outlook and Discussion. But still, we're in hurricane season and we have auto down here and it's taking advantage of this anticyclonic flow in the atmosphere. Fairly light upper level winds overall. They're not ideal, but we're not seeing the winds blow across the system like we would have up here in the northern latitudes. It's sort of that clockwise fanning out. Uh, so it's enough marginal to maybe slightly better than marginal conditions. And uh, the upper level winds may improve because uh, generally speaking, you have this anticyclonic flow sending down across this region and that's going to just continue to foster development. So this should become a hurricane. In fact, that's what the forecast is. Uh, looking at the vorticity signature, it still has a little bit of energy sitting out over here north of Colombia and uh, Venezuela. So yeah, once it sort of sheds that, you remember Matthew had that, sort of that weird area following along. Uh, maybe this region is just prone to that, something to look into for future discussions. But right around the center itself down here, uh, the vorticity signature fairly round in nature, and it'll probably improve over the coming days. So let's take a look at what the GFS, the very latest run, shows, and this is the next five days. So if you have interests down in the area, and I'm going to circle, this is our system right here. Let's use a better color. There it is right there. This is the 5,000 foot level of the atmosphere, or what we call the 850 millibar level, and we're looking for the vorticity or the spin in the atmosphere. How round does it appear? And you have these lobes of energy here. This is the initial map. Uh, and watch how these kind of disappear over time, and this consolidates and then takes off towards Nicaragua. I'm sorry, yeah, Nicaragua. Make sure my geography is correct uh, over the next few days. So let's put this into motion, and then I'll scroll down. And this is every hour out to five days. So we're moving on out to 12 hours out. Uh, and you see the very slow movement. It's basically just stationary, just on the east side of 80 degrees longitude, which is right there. All right, so it's just hanging around for about the next day or so, and it starts to consolidate a few other pieces of energy nearby competing. But once it sheds that, watch what happens here. Uh, we are now out to approaching day three, 72 hours out, and it really starts to come together there, focusing and bundling that energy as it gets closer and closer, but very slow to Nicaragua. Here is the Costa Rica-Nicaraguan border. And so it goes north of Costa Rica into Nicaragua there, but extremely slow. And so that is my big worry here, that a tremendous amount of rainfall will spread across this region, and that is going to be a problem in and of itself uh, on a big scale. And we're going to have to really, really pay attention to that over the next few days. I'm going to speed it up just a little bit, and I want to explain you know, why isn't this going to come up into the United States or the Gulf of Mexico or Cuba or the Yucatan. Well, you see there's this ridge up here of high pressure, basically keeping it shoved down to the south. This is a nice dense area of air, and it's keeping this shoved into the Caribbean. We don't see that relaxing. There's no trough digging in like this to scoop it up and bring it out. So the high pressure area uh, keeping this basically buried in the Southwest Caribbean, and so this is no worry for folks in the Northwest Caribbean and certainly not the United States. We're going to have enough problems as it is uh, with what happens in Nicaragua and parts of Costa Rica. So if you have plans down there, no people down there, etc., uh, pay attention to this because it's looking like it's going to ramp up and become a wind problem, uh, possibly a strong hurricane, but the rain, I'm going to say it one more time, that rainfall could be very, very bad and we need to watch that closely, and I'll stay on top of that and discuss it as needed over the next few days. All right? Well, that's it from me for today. Have a great rest of your afternoon. 
interesting as it is to talk about hurricanes this time of year you know it has to be done we got to watch this and uh you know there are people down there in that region that this will affect and so i'm going to stay on top of it have a great rest of your uh monday like i said i am mark sudduth hurricane track.com thank you as always for tuning in and i'll be back with more for you tomorrow afternoon